In this video, I'm going to review a couple of the assignments out of Unit 9. In Unit 9, we are reviewing the major scale pattern and we're adding on some basic chords. Remember, a chord is three or more notes. I'm going to go over, first of all, Marianne on page 81. In this song, you're going to see two different chords, a C chord, C, E, G, and when the notes are stacked in third intervals like this is, you do call it by the bottom note, that is the root of the chord, so this is a C chord. The second chord that you see on the page is called a G7 chord, that consists of B, F, and G. And the root of that chord isn't so clear if you're looking at it and thinking why is this called a G chord even though the G isn't the bottom note. If you rearrange the notes slightly into G, B, D, and F, we have a G chord when we play G, B, and D. The F comes from the number 7. If you notice it says G7. From G to F, that is the interval distance of a 7th. That's why we're adding on one extra note to this basic G chord. And we're going to rearrange these four notes now slowly. We're going to move the G up to the top. And we can drop one of the notes and still call it a chord. So we're going to drop the D in this case. And now we end up B, F, and G, the way the notes are arranged on the page. So that G7 chord is a little trickier in, in terms of naming it, but just know that it's actually um, based upon the G is the root of the chord. So we have our C chord and we have our G7 chord. So practice those a few times. Get those comfortably in your fingers before you move on to the song Mary Ann, which sounds like this. One, two, three, four. revolving around those two chord patterns. Okay, your right hand, these should be notes that you know fairly well by now on middle C. The one note that might throw you off a little bit is in measure six. You have to shift your thumb slightly down to get to that B below middle C. That also happens later on in the last line in measure 14. Okay, but practice your chord patterns first. Get comfortable with those chords. When you look at simple gifts on the next page, you'll see the C chord and the G7 chord. We're also going to add in an F chord. Um, if you look at the top of the page, the chord is played with a C in the bottom, C, F, and A. But again, we're not going to call it a C chord because it's not stacked in thirds, so we can't just call this by the bottom note. If you rearrange these notes, F, A, and C, now the notes are arranged in third intervals, hence it's an F chord. Now we found the root of the chord, it's the bottom of this chord. Okay, so we're going to slide back over to this position, practice going from the C chord to the F chord. Notice that my, the only note that's moving, the only finger that's moving is my thumb to get to that A on top of the F chord. Okay, this is simple gifts at the bottom of page 82. And it's a short piece, so I'll play through it a couple of times. It starts on beat number four. It's an incomplete measure. One, and two, and three, and. might be the ending so you might just want to concentrate on those last few measures when you have to do those chord changes very quickly for example the very last measure um, 
you have to get comfortable with those chord changes first in the left hand. Even though you can be, you can slow down because of that writ in measure seven, you can get gradually slower. Practice these, these subtle little changes between the chords so that doesn't catch you off guard. Measure seven might be tricky also because you have, you have two chords in that measure. So again, practice with your left hand switching between those chords. You don't have to move very far, but you need to feel comfortable going back and forth between those chords. I'm going to go through that again. One and two and three and.